over the last uh, uh, you know quarter or so we have seen seminal falls in several emerging markets including chinese market and the indian market as well uh, have they fallen enough now to yield value uh, so i think uh, i think we're seeing some signs of value coming in but not uh, the type of trough valuations that we would expect uh, to see uh, I think in this type of environment as the trade rhetoric heats up. So our view is, is that, which has been for, for some for some time, is that the US will be putting maximum pressure on China regarding trade, possibly going all in uh, to, you know, to, uh, to you know, the full $500 billion in tariffs plus. Uh, at least initially at 10, at 10 percent as a means of bringing China to the negotiating table. So this, you know, over the course of time, is likely to drive up the U.S. dollar and put pressure on emerging markets. So we still think emerging markets will be under pressure. Uh, so things get worse before they get better. But we think that what this will likely do is, is that once we do get a deal struck on trade, which we think will happen, it's unlikely to happen before the midterm elections, is that we'll see a reversal in the dollar a, uh, a recovery in commodity prices and a catch up rally in EM assets, including equities. Mm. Uh, Paul, hi, good morning. So when you say you're seeing some signs of value in equities, you're talking about the, uh, the developed market equities like the U.S. markets, right? Uh, you'd rather put money there than put money in emerging markets right now? Uh, okay, so in terms of the value that I'm talking about, is that we're we, we're looking at uh, my focus primarily is Asia, but just well, I, I'll mention that first, and then look at global context. In the context of Asia X Japan, in Asia X Japan, we're about seven or to eight percent above the post GFC trough, using three different valuation measures: PER, PBR, and EDU back down. So um, I don't think it's the right comparison to look at the global financial crisis because what we're seeing at the moment, um, you know, is not really sort of apples with apples. But I do think in sort of a post uh, sort of a post GFC low, which also equates to around two standard deviations below the 10-year average, is about. Once we are in an environment that is that is hawkish mm. and we haven't got a deal struck, then this is going to be supportive of the US dollar, which will put emerging markets under pressure, emerging market currencies under mm. pressure in particular. Okay. So I think the, the the pressure for the for the rupee in particular is not is uh, uh, is not over for mm. the time for the for the time being until the trade deal is struck. Yeah, actually there are fresh reverses with the yuan today at six point nine three, you know, touching distance of seven. Uh, Paul, mm. what's your sense of India itself? Uh, do you look at the market very closely? There was a problem in the Indian debt markets as well and in the non-bank finance companies. All told, mm. do you think the Indian market's now uh, trading at good value or do you think you, you will only pick it if it's cheaper? So we've been overweight in India for most of this year and we actually increased our overweight uh, in Asia X Japan uh, a couple of months ago. So for us, I know that in, in sort of local currency terms, in terms of um, in terms of domestic investors, it's been a, it's been a tough time. But there've been many other markets in the EM space globally, and also in the region here, the Fed much worse. So uh, it may surprise you that we've actually seen it as being a safe haven 
uh, and that's worked out quite well for us. We've also been here to wait in the consumer sectors, both of which India and the, and the consumer in general, we think is less exposed to the, to the trade cycle. So we think that there's a premium that's deserved in Indian equities that's associated with the fact that it's driven by domestic growth factors and not uh, by, the, by the trade cycle. Now, as far as the, 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 the debt issue is concerned, is that, you know, I think this has been a negative shock. Uh, I think we are, I think uh, a lot of people thought that after the RBI's risk, you know, risk assessment uh, last last year, that we sort of passed that. But clearly, that's not been the case. Mm. So there has been, you know, there has been some you know, further concern there, and sort of little widening out in, in credit spreads. Not, not, not to the degree that would worry me from a, you know, from a, 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 a from, from a systemic risk perspective. Mm -hmm. But certainly, has led to an increase in the risk premium there, which is why we've seen. You know, um, you know, a, a correction in that particular space. But I'm okay on India. Mm -hmm. um, we do have one bank there in our top picks, which is Axis Bank. Um, but we're more focused on industrials um, and also the consumer.